Hello, friend. I'm Mike McCurry. You're listening to the Bible Tract Echoes radio broadcast, and I so appreciate the fact that you are. Today, we close out what has been a three-week series. We're going to move on to some different things next week that I'm looking forward to, but today we close out the three ingredients of a good Christian. Three ingredients of a good Christian. I want to be a good Christian. I hope you do as well. If you would, grab your Bibles. Turn to the book of Acts chapter 4. Very quick recap. We talked uh, two weeks ago about the spirit of agreement, the spirit of the amen, being willing to say, so be it, or verify to trust what God's word has to say. One week ago, we talked about the spirit of the adjustment, the spirit of the altar, the willingness to adjust what you and I do because God's word tells us so. Then, this week, we've talked about the actions that good Christians are willing to take. And la- yesterday, we talked about why you might not be willing to take action. I hope you are willing to take action. Before we jump into the book of Acts chapter 4, let me remind you once again to come to our grand opening in Odell, Illinois. That's O D E. L.L. Illinois. If you have questions about the grand opening on Saturday, October 1st from 1 to 5 p.m. Central Time, you can use any of the contact methods that the announcer at the conclusion of this broadcast will give you in just a few minutes. We've talked about the amen, the altar, the actions, and now after looking at why we might not be willing to take action, we're going to look at what could have been the fourth part, the fourth concept, the fourth ingredient, but we've rejected it for a very specific couple of reasons. We're going to look at the book of Acts chapter number four and verse number 18. And they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. What are these people saying in the Bible here? What are Peter and John telling these ones that are trying to get them to shut their mouths and stop talking about that one called Jesus? What they're saying is that they are not willing to be in unity or be willing to be in accord with what the, what the, what, what the world tells them they must or what they should do. The fourth ingredient I had strongly considered adding was the spirit of accord, the spirit of unity, the willingness to go along, to get along. And you'll see why we rejected this fourth ingredient. We realized something. Unity. I want you to get this. Think about this for a moment. Unity, though desirable, is not worth compromising for. Unity, though desirable, is oftentimes not worth making concessions for. And I'm not talking about the compromise of the political realm. I'm not talking about compromise between a husband and a wife. I'm not talking about between a a son and and a father. I'm talking about compromising what God's word says. Unity is not worth that. Unity, though desirable, is not worth complying with what the world wants for. It seems all the time the world is asking for more and more. The world wants you to live on its terms. The world wants you to to agree with what it says. I I found oftentimes that there's a certain segment of the population, they don't want to hear your opinion. They just want to hear their opinion come out of your mouth. And unity, though desirable, is not worth conforming to the world for. A biblical accord, is a biblical agreement is only possible through the three prior agreements, the amen, the altar, and the acts. It is impossible to have a biblical unity without those things. And unity is impossible to have if you're missing any of the first three ingredients we've spent the last couple of weeks talking about. Notice also that you might think that two-thirds of the ingredients we've mentioned over these past couple of weeks are about what happens inside the bounds of a church. And only the last one, the action that we've spent this week talking about, is for out there, is for out in the world. We think the agreement with God's word and the altar, the adjustment, the willingness to make adjustment, that's about what happens in the church, right? Uh, No, friend. 
When I said agreement a week ago, I told you that I wasn't saying being in agreement with the pastor and his preaching. I pointed out that this meant agreement with God. But it is hard to even know whether to agree with God or how well you agree with God if you never read the Bible. I can tell you why you don't have the spirit of the amen, why you don't have agreement, why you don't have accord, why you don't have unity with other brothers and sisters in Christ. It could be because we aren't in agreement with God's word. When I said adjustment, I didn't mean just adjusting to what is being preached and making decisions down at an altar at the front of a church. I pointed out that this meant adjustment to every spiritual impulse, whether it happens inside of a church or without, as you walk with God in the temple of your body. It is hard to know what to make adjustment to if you won't, figuratively or literally, spend time at an altar. I'll read again Acts chapter 4 and verse number 18. And they called them and commanded them. These are the people, the powers of the world. Commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. They were commanded not to teach in the name of Jesus. Is that something that a Christian, whether from 2,000 years ago or a modern-day Christian, should acquiesce to? Should say a blanket agreement to? Okay, fine. I won't, I, I won't preach in the name of Jesus. Well, Peter and John answered and said to them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye. For we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Think about this. You shouldn't be able to help yourself. I, I can tell you why you act the way you do. I can tell you why you agree and amen or don't the way that you do. I can tell why you are willing to adjust the way you do or don't, and I can tell you why you act or don't the way that you do. It has to do with being in unity with what God has to say. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 10 says this, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye shall all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 and verse number 1 says this. I'm going to read a little scripture here, but I want to cement this in your mind that unity comes about because we are focused on agreeing and adjusting and taking action based off what God says. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. See, pause here for just a moment. Paul didn't send out flyers or pamphlets or surveys to, to the church and find out what they wanted to hear about. No, he came to them and said, we need to know Jesus Christ. And I was with you in weakness, he continues, and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew, for had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, familiar passage here, I hath not seen, nor ear heard, nor have en neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. You can't have unity in the body of Christ without agreeing with what Christ says. You can't have uh, the right adjustments made in the body of Christ without being willing to adjust to what the Bible says. Your church and Christians will never succeed, overcome, or grow spiritually without people that agree with God, adjust to God, and take action for God. Hebrews chapter 12. Look there if you would. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 6. The Bible says this, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as sons. 
For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? If you are a son or a daughter of God, he's going to make adjustments in your life. And sometimes they feel a little bit more impactful than others. Sometimes they hurt a little bit more. Sometimes they require a little more sacrifice than other times. What kind of a child of God are you? Are you one that will never succeed, never overcome, or never grow spiritually because you don't agree with, adjust to, and take action for God? I read again from, I think, yesterday, John 12 and verse 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. If you are one of his, then you're going to want to be with him. Proverbs chapter 13, verse number 10. Only by pride cometh contention, but with the well-advised is wisdom. Friend, if there is deep-seated pride and angst and bitterness and problems in your life, well, then I can tell you why you're not agreeing, why you're not adjusting, why you're not taking action on behalf of God. But if you have pride, or should I say, if there is pride in your relationship with God and you won't give up what you're supposed to give up, the problem is not on God's side of the equation. His side is perfectly balanced. He's waiting for us to let go of that which is keeping us from doing his will. I hope that our pride, our false humility, our lack of care for God won't be standing between you and him being lifted up. We've talked for these last three weeks about ingredients of a good Christian. I hope you can claim that you are striving, whether or not you would say you are a good, Christ good Christian, but that you are striving to be a good Christian. In just a moment, we're going to close out the broadcast. I'm going to ask you, if you would, to consider being a part of the Bible Tracts Incorporated Grand Opening coming up very soon, October, uh, October 1st. That's a Saturday. We'd love to see you there. I'm always so very thankful for these uh, many of you that listen to this radio broadcast. If you're listening today, I'd love to hear from you. If you have questions about the Grand Opening, you can text me. Let me get, give you that number very quickly. Ready? 3093 one six seven two four zero in just a few moments we'll close a broadcast out if you have more questions or you need another method of contacting us the announcer will come on and tell you all about how you can contact us as always you can go to our website bibletracksinc.org and order some of our sample booklets today have a great day for his glory i look forward to talking to you next week and seeing you in person at the grand opening god bless